All right, then we are live. Uh, this is an interview with uh, Kauchik Roy from ACI Worldwide. Welcome. Thank you, Hakim. I'm very happy to be here and looking forward to this chat because of all the exciting work you guys are doing. Oh, thank you. Really thank you. Well, well ACI coming. Worldwide is an, uh, it's sort of a worldwide, it sounds global and it is global, but um, I think to many, uh, I think listening as, as it is a B2B play, could you, you know, just explain a little bit uh, and don't be shy. Just tell us everything about the greatness of ACI Worldwide. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure about, uh, you want to use the word greatness per se, but yeah, I mean, look, uh, we, are a, we are a technology company uh, headquartered in the US. Uh, we serve three principal segments with technology solutions linked to payments, banks and financial institutions, uh, merchants and billers around the world. Uh, to give you some context, uh, we are about uh, $1.4 billion in, in annual revenue, uh, US headquartered with, with offices in about uh, 50 countries around the world. Uh, we serve uh, banks, merchants and billers, like I said, but mostly to give you context of uh, how, how, how big or small ACI is, uh, on some days we, we process up to $11 trillion worth of uh, uh, cash and securities and value, right? So uh, that's kind of what we do. Uh, we work with 18 of the top 20 banks uh, in the world. Uh, so so ACI uh, is very, very well known for uh, the resilience and the, uh, you know, we, we use a word called sleepability, which is you take ACI, uh, our customers can sleep at night without any fear of, uh, you know, the system going down. And we have an amazing track record. Uh, I look after product and marketing for, for this part of the world, which is sort of uh, Asia, Middle East, Africa. Until recently, I ran the India business. And, and to, again, give you context, because India is an exciting market for everybody uh, in terms of the growth of payments per se. Uh, we work with eight of the top 10 banks. On some days, we process uh, well over 100 million transactions uh, for leading banks in India. Uh, you know, transactions per second is running into 2,000 or so for our largest customers. So yeah, that's kind of what we do. And, and when you're saying, um, Kaju, when you're saying processing, it, it, is this card payments, uh, real-time payments, uh, what, what, or what, what it, it is the switching uh, to bring uh, that's right. money that's from right. one account to another. Is that right? That's right. It's it's any to any, right? Uh, uh, you know, our, our, our sort of philosophy is any payments, every possibility, right? Uh, and and uh, in, in today's world, uh, you know, form factors are not, relevant anymore right uh, so we will do uh, yeah card we will do ACH we will do wallets we will do everything and and basically uh, uh, a bit of that is around sort of authorizing processing uh, and approving the transaction and then a lot of device driving and and this is important because like I said when you're a large bank with uh, you know 50,000 ATMs 55,000 ATMs uh, device driving becomes really, really critical. Uh, yeah. You can't let it fail. So yeah, so anything to anything. Our, our focus, obviously, traditionally, uh, you know, a lot of companies in payments are really born out of cards and, and 16 digit numbers. And really our, our, our sweet spot has for a long time been debit issuing and acquiring, right? So we, we play both on the uh, POS, e-commerce, as well as the issuing side. Uh, but obviously, uh, increasingly, there's a lot of focus around the world on, on real time, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, that's at the cornerstone of our growth strategy going forward on as the world accelerates. And, and we already run central infrastructure, real time central infrastructure in a number of countries around the world. Uh, yeah, I know you actually, uh, you know, because, you know, we, we at Crunchfit, we are currently, we, we, we haven't come as far as you have, for sure. Uh, 25 people strong, uh, but we're focusing uh, Sweden and India. And but I I know the switches, the real time switches. Uh, uh, you uh, you acquired the company that uh, that has actually delivered the switch to Bank Gyro uh, that does the switching for uh, Swish, which is the leading um, the leading real time payment service of Sweden. But I, and I know you also have a. Uh, invested into is it MindGate in India that is the switch? That's right. That's switch. right. So so yeah, I mean among our flagship real time uh, before I come to India is is really faster payments in the UK yeah. that runs on ACI software, 
And then one of the big ASEAN markets, uh, Malaysia, so Paynet sort of is something that we interconnected the central infrastructure and all the banks there. So, and then uh, in India, uh, real time uh, has sort of traditionally IMPS, which is sort of interbank, right? And then as far as retail payments are con concerned, uh, as, as you know, uh, you know, UPI uh, has been sort of transformational in India. It went from zero maybe 36 months ago to 2.4 billion financial transactions last month so that's phenomenal so so yes we 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 had a major investment uh, in a in a company called mindgate uh, summer of 2018 uh, 19 yeah. uh, and mindgate provides uh, the technology for switching as well as uh, a lot of connectors and overlay services which is really the essence of mobile-based real-time payments uh, to a number of banks in India. Uh, pretty much, I would say, uh, the, the top three players of UPI all run on MindGate, which is a joint venture company that, that SEI has in, in investment in. Yeah. I, I, I saw some news as well, uh, Kaushik. I don't know if you can comment on that, but the feds in the US uh, is, is sort of looking for real-time switching as well. That's sort of the card the country in the world, number one. But uh, they're looking for real-time switches. And uh, I saw uh, ACI is... Uh, I don't know if you were bidding for it or are you going to pilot? Or... No, I think we are, in the, we are in the mix. I think I think it's going to be a long process from what I know. I'm not really that close to the nitty-gritty, but I think there's been an initial shortlist based on your experience and, and, and global credentials. Yeah. And uh, we certainly expect to have a major role to play as, as a market leader uh, in, in helping transform the US payment system really into a real-time payment system. And in yeah. that sense, uh, you know, a lot of markets around the world are from on a real-time rail perspective have, have moved ahead, right? So I think the Fed is now really taking it uh, very, very seriously. So we, we certainly expect to have a role to play as ACI. Yeah, but but you you just transitioned. I, I know as of first of Jan into a new role that you are you are a product manager for uh, anything as you said from uh, Australia, uh, sort of uh, Asia, Middle East, Africa. It's sort of a huge area, isn't it? You you yeah, probably yeah. have you must have um, yeah. In terms of population, most people are under you uh, in a way uh, in the world. Uh, in your area, isn't it? Yeah, so so yeah, so uh, our structure is slightly different. So just before this, like you said, I used to run the business for South Asia, which is predominantly India. It's one of the most exciting markets in the world. And uh, uh, my new role is more focused on upstream value. So not so much sort of selling the solution, but really building our uh, product strategy and making sure that we are capitalizing on, on the growth opportunities, like you said. I mean, already within ACI, we are seeing uh, Asia, Middle East, India, uh, Africa, you know, uh, and Latin America, which is other sort of geo focus for us. Uh, huge, huge opportunity and growth rates are sort of through the roof compared to more mature markets, as you'd expect, right? Yeah. And what is also happening, uh, sort of linked to our earlier conversation, that the that the level of innovation, right, uh, in, in some of these markets are accelerated. So in, in many sense, some of these markets haven't even got to the level of, or will never get to the level of credit card penetration that the US and Europe have gotten, right? Uh, some of these countries, they will just bypass one whole generation of form factor mm -hmm. and, and probably move to sort of newer form factors. So I think it is really important from an ACI standpoint that we stay ahead of the curve. So, so in some sense, uh, my, my role is really sort of not just looking at what we deliver now and what will help us deliver our, our financial commitment to the organization for this year, but equally uh, focusing on, uh, you know, at least some of the key markets in this large geography, as you say, we can't, we can't solve for everything, but some of our strategic markets of interest, uh, you know, where do we think from a macroeconomic standpoint, those markets are going to go from a technology payments regulatory standpoint. So we want to stay ahead of the game and, and, and look at sort of our strategy, our roadmap with a slightly more sort of three to five year horizon. Uh, I yeah. think that's really important. No, I, I'm, I, I'm actually very happy that in a way that you have transition and looking at it from a more strategic perspective, you're coming from India. So you understand certainly the Indian perspective and that that's an exciting market. And uh, um, I remember when we spoke first time, it, it, I, you know, I thought it was a great call, um, probably more than a month ago. Uh, but, but I, you know, uh, you were talking about your, uh, 
your, your capabilities for uh, online switching. And I told you, well, we might be a match in heaven because uh, we do offline switching. And I think uh, these two things could possibly, um, you know, link up. Uh, we, we do an offline uh, step uh, and then we need to then process that. Uh, and if you are, if you are that switch uh, for so many markets and so many banks and so, many, so much in the world, uh, it, it is an extremely interesting partner for us uh, to have. And I don't know, have you had, have you had a chance to discuss our solution more internally since we, we, since we spoke? Where, where are you in, in terms of what, what do you think of our offline switching capability that we, or offline settlement, I should say? That we yeah, have? So, so before I sort of comment on, you know, your solution, I, I think what, what got me interested in our first conversation was really saying, is there a customer pain point? right, uh, that I'm aware of having worked with all the leading banks in India uh, on really processing uh, transactions uh, in a way that customer experience is seamless, right? I mean, as you know, with India, when, when like I said with UPI, when you grow from zero to 2.4 billion transactions in less than three years, nothing can quite prepare you for that sort of growth of scale, right? Uh, and actually nobody knows where it's going to stop. I mean, if, if, you, if you look at like, you know, we're already saying 25 to 30 billion transactions annually on a, on a single payment platform. Uh, will that get to 50? Will that get to 75? Nobody knows because in a way, uh, you know, you're still probably touching less than 3% of the population, right? So I think, I think the big thing for India and a lot of other emerging markets, the point that I made earlier, is that the, the mobile phones, the sort of, you know, the, at the epicenter of the payment ecosystem going forward, right? Uh, and that's kind of going to be the genesis of all form factors. Uh, and therefore, what then happens is, and you know this already, uh, India has, India has, uh, I think, over a billion uh, cellular phones, uh, I think about maybe 450 million smartphones already, right? You can buy a full, fully fun, full feature smartphone in India for I want to say maybe $100, uh, which kind of does everything. So, so I think a lot of things have happened in India that really has exploded the ability to grow payments, right? I think least of all the access to mobile phones and bandwidth, et cetera, that, that happened through some telecom transformation and entrance of new players. And therefore then what has happened is, uh, you know, in India, I think you and I spoke about this, we call about the jam trinity, right? So, and then the government's obviously very, very keen with the banking system and to sort of digitize the country and, and reduce the cash usage in the economy. So the government's pushing that in a big way. Now, the challenge that this unprecedented growth is starting to have is really around banks and their ability to continue to invest in the kind of infrastructure that is required to process these transactions real time and to ensure seamless customer experience, right? So inevitably, it is simply not possible to do, right, with the volumes we are talking about. And therefore, offline approval authorization processing becomes at the core. If you really want to go into tier two, tier three cities, because remember, once UPI goes to the next tranche of growth, a lot of it is really going to be in tier two, tier three cities uh, from people who are not that digitally savvy, right? Have never held a card. They're going to be processing through. So the fact that they're used to cash, which has instant gratification between a buyer and a seller is not easy to replicate if something goes wrong in the transaction. So you're trying to build trust and to, you know, demonstrate that this is easier than cash or does everything the cash does and it is safer and, and, and more seamless. So for that, I think there is a lot of conversation around uh, what can happen to make sure there is no friction, right? How do you take the friction away? You know, there are, there are a plethora of wallets, but ultimately, uh, you know, it's beyond person to person, right? If you go to a small town in India, a merchant has to be paid you know, form factors are through the roof. Like already, if I go to a coffee shop in India, you know, I think there are some six or seven QR codes that are floating around, right? It's all getting very, very complex. So I think this whole offline thing is really, really critical, right? On how to make it happen. And, and you know this already, but it's important to mention that the Reserve Bank obviously is one of the smartest regulators that I've personally sort of like encountered, but 
uh, when they did the national common mobility card or when they when they envisaged that national common mobility card they already thought about things like offline modes right because they they figured that you know imagine walking through a, a busy indian railway station right so you know and and people trying to swipe their card through a turnstile right it was never going to be able to successfully manage things in an online mode so i think so from that perspective to to your original uh, question right saying where do you think crunch fish fits and your solution fits right i i always look at life as is there a problem that is currently not being solved and that is going to be a deterrent to uh, everyone's ambition to grow this category and that problem clearly exists right if we can find a solution that seamlessly uh you know is able to process transaction particularly low value right uh without actually putting enormous amount of pressure on the bank's core banking system that would really uh, not just solve the bank's problem but it will also massively accelerate growth because if you if you think about it central banking uh, uh, you know um, cbs and core banking systems were never ever designed to process 15 transactions per account per day right uh, you know you had a monthly in of a salary and then few debits sort of through the month right now that account and i'm i'll use my example right i i'm a very active user of upi and i use multiple apps and maybe six different apps linked to two individual bank accounts i have not gone to my online banking uh, portal right i think for about a year because upi actually allows you to pay up to 100000 rupees which is about uh, which is about 1500 us dollars roughly right normally on a day to day you don't you're not transacting more than 1500 dollars in india uh, on a on a day to day basis right so so if i have to send money to somebody if i have to pay utilities if i have to pay my son's uh, you know school school not school tuition soccer if i have to pay uh, you know domestic help which kind of some of us do have in india uh, uh, everything is on upi right because it takes 30 second to complete a transaction now as that practice grows uh, you know how many times am i going to hit my uh, bank account in a day right mm -hmm. uh, i check my balance using my phone and uh, several times now because it's so easy right if i had to so i think i think so so from my perspective i think you guys are on to something uh, game changing in a way from a opportunity perspective right uh, particularly for emerging markets uh, you know this will become even more critical right uh, you know india has done an amazing job on on bandwidth of mobile coverage etc but it's a very very large country i mean that will continue to be an issue uh, same for africa i mean africa is the other market i see very very similar of course africa has the advantage of people already being quite savvy using mobile phones thanks to mpesa uh, and and a lot of this is actually based on the same concept remember mpesa used to be a prepaid wallet so there is no authorization really required but as the scale grows i think there is tremendous opportunity for crunchfish to really integrate itself as a as a as a core uh, value provider uh, in that ecosystem Right. You know, and I, I, I don't know if you noticed we we, we did put out um, a, a press release um, uh, over the weekend here about the, the, the sheer fact that we can be offline um, opens up uh, a tremendous opportunity to offer service interoperability, which I don't think was ever possible before. Because um, if you if you if you want to do it online, connecting you know a, a Swedish payment app paying in another country, for instance. that makes it very difficult if you have to do checking for balance uh, in, in real time at the at the point uh, of sale when you are uh, you know at the moment of purchase uh, moment of payment but if you can just do it in two steps uh, you can do an offline payment because then the, the sub subsequent step the the online switching uh, on online payment is it's just a normal transaction and you know how to do that you can you can do yeah, it in yeah. remittance uh, So you take care of that part. So that that's why I, I, I'm quite excited about uh, potentially a partnership here with with ACI because I think we 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 could bring um, the offline offline part, uh, and then you are already extremely well established uh, in the world uh, with the online switching. So I, I think there is an um, 
There, there's a nice match here between. Uh, yeah, yeah, there are, there are. Look, there are definitely synergies, and I think we should explore how we can we can partner. Uh, I, I would say, the point that you mentioned, interoperability is absolutely key, right? I mean, again, I go back to the Reserve Bank because I know India is a market of interest for you as well as for us. Uh, everything Reserve Bank does, interoperable interoperability is fundamental to that philosophy, right? Yeah. I mean, the reason that UPI has taken over is because it's just interoperable, right? Across banks in real time, across across uh, payment service providers in, in, in real time, right? Who would have thought that, right? I'm using Google to send money to somebody else's WhatsApp bank, uh, app and routing it from one bank to another with sort of Google and WhatsApp being involved in the middle, like nobody could have yeah. envisaged that. I think, I think this becomes really important because a couple of other observations for me, particularly sort of post COVID, right? I think, I think, in markets like India, where scale is growing, uh, you know, and, and and people are eventually going to monetize all of this just through simple growth of scale, right? I mean, because the, the values per transaction are still low ticket and it's not like a traditional credit card where you make a $3,000 purchase and your interchange earns you enough revenue. We're talking very, very low ticket. I, I would say, uh, I, 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 there's no published stat, but I would say 30, 40% of transactions will probably be less than three dollars right i wouldn't be shocked i heard, I heard from uh, i don't know if you know this gentleman uh, he, he he's sort of advising to us ram rastogi he, he was telling yeah, yeah, us I know. 52%, yeah. 52 percent of the transaction of upi is less than three dollars 52 yeah, so it, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised by that right so and i think that as you go into tier two tier three cities uh on one hand as consumer to merchant grows you expect the overall average ticket size to go higher mm -hmm. right but I think the number of low value transactions will still go higher because yeah. you're going to go to tier two, tier three cities, right? So, so I think it's an interesting balancing act. So, so, so for me, uh, uh, you know, I think eventually, like if you think about all of the initiatives the RBI has done, right? Things like Bharat QR code, I think two things are happening. One is if, while banks are still trying to figure out how to monetize, they're also now looking at investments and infrastructure costs that is clearly required to sustain this. You know, they can't continue to spend 20, 30 million dollars to build infrastructure. Mm. Uh, and I'll give you an interesting example of a CIO of a very a large Indian bank uh, that, I, that I spoke with. And he said, look, the problem is not just to support uh, average transaction. The problem is as a bank where trust is everything, I have to set up infrastructure to support the peak. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, let's say there is a, there is a day called Dhanteras in India, which is a few weeks before Diwali. Uh, it's customary for everyone to make a purchase, right? Mm. Or if there's a massive Amazon sale happening, you know, uh, the peaks could be two x, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what happens the next day, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so I think banks are really looking at uh, ways to capitalize on this opportunity of growth. Right, but equally trying to then simplify. And one of the key things about interoperability uh, is around you know you you put a system in, it can plug and play with anything, right? Yeah. You're not spending months and thousands of dollars building one integration at a time. That is just not no, 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 sustainable anymore. But, but I think the, the the beauty here with the uh, the offline payment, the, yes, we we as we now realize we can deliver sort of service interoperability. But but the, the peak demand, as you're saying, that the banks needs to design for, we are solving for that because again, uh, you do the transaction offline. If you have a connect connectivity, you can send it up, and and it could just sit there, marinate for. It doesn't matter if it marinates for five minutes, and then it goes through. So they don't really have to solve for a real time response, uh, which that's what's killing them. That they have to respond in real time, otherwise uh, the service doesn't work. If you just can take away that pressure uh, at the moment of payment, then um, problem solved. Uh, the peak yeah, yeah. Then... I mean, to a large extent, I wouldn't say problem solved, but yeah, I mean, it takes away, like particularly if you take away 52% of the transaction load, right, because they're low value. Yeah, 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 uh, well, yeah, 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 but, but, but and, and remember, there is, a, uh, there is also not just debits, there is credits too. Uh, as yeah, yeah. you know, in India, a big part of the UPI growth is really being fueled by a lot of these cash back yeah. offers, right? Even somebody like me, who's been in and around payments for 20 years, the moment I complete a Google Pay transaction and straight away going to my scratch card, right? And yeah. it's it's sort of fun and games. I'm telling my son, okay, scratch this, 
maybe you'll get five rupees good luck whatever <laughs> but that, that goes into your account right it's kind of interesting on on um, on sort of uh yeah i, I think yeah uh, i think it's interesting if um Comment on business model because a lot of people ask us. Uh, so, Crunchfish, what what would uh, your business model be? But but it's interesting, I think, to look at you in a way as a big brother here. You you have been in sort of a online settlement, and because you you have a transactional based uh, business model, isn't it? You're, you're just looking for yes, you're paid per. You just want volume, really. Isn't that? That's right. That's right. I mean, our our like I said, uh, you know, any payments, every possibility. Uh, our business models really based around uh, long-term tenured licenses, yeah. and then within that, the number of transactions that a company processes, right? Yeah. So, so for us, the more transactions we can process, the better for ACI, right? So, yeah. so we are not in the sort of per transaction, you know, margin. I think, I think for us, it's about scale, uh, and yeah. uh, it sits very well because, like I said, ACI works with. 18 of the top 20 banks uh, around the world, uh, eight of the top 10 banks in India. And uh, the scalability and the resilience of our systems is unmatched, right? Yeah. Uh, our our, our uh, newest relationship with a large bank in India is probably 15 years old, right? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you know, and, and, and people vouch for that, right? When you have large scale systems, you can't even afford for it to sort of go down for five minutes. Right? No, no, no. Uh, so, so for us, uh, you know, it, it is about that. If you if you are going to be investing uh, in a space like real time, for example, as as you would, right, uh, with with Crunchfish, it is always going to be about the scalability of that model and the number of transactions that you can process. So, in yeah. that sense, uh, you know, I think that's the future, right? Uh, yeah. I, I mentioned this many times before, and even more so after COVID, right? Banks are under pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are looking at, uh, you know, uh, their investments and the return on those investments uh, very, very carefully, right? There are big consulting projects on within banks on how to how to move uh, transactions across various channels to contribute to lower cost of channels, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, versus higher cost of channels, right? A lot of banks are now saying, how do we convert all our off-us transactions to on-us transactions, right? Mm. Uh, in fact, uh, without taking names, there is a very, very large sort of processor in India who does acquiring. That's their business model. Uh, they, they, when you are, uh, 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 when you, when you walk into a gas station in India uh, with a particular card, uh, and you know you swipe that card, uh, they identify the issuer bank, right? Uh, based on your bin range and then they convert or, or the merchant converts that transaction to the same bank as an acquirer right so so it becomes an honor so i think i think uh, yeah i think there's a lot of pressure uh, you know I, I think as both of us who who work with uh, banks and financial inter intermediaries as our end customers ultimately your business model needs to be aligned to your customer's business model yeah, yeah. And uh, our customer's business model is uh, push for scale growth, right? So, so that's kind of what we are. But, but, it's, but it's a good thing right now because we certainly see it. I, you know, I, Ram, as we mentioned before, he's talking about a billion transaction a day in India. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that we yeah. should, you know, right now we are two point four billion a month. But uh, yeah. why couldn't we do billion? But but obviously that it needs a, a, a sort of a, like a design thinking here. You you need to you can't just uh, continue to invest as we are today uh, into infrastructure. You need to. I think there has to be novel thinking here in order to cope with all that phenomenon. absolutely absolutely i think i i say this a lot in 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 forums uh, even in public forums right so you know we we've been in and around payments for well over two decades both you and i right so 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 in that sense uh, even now when i go to india i still carry currency right so cash is never really going to go away because even in today's world there is no substitute right so i think what you guys are trying to build and it'll take probably you know a lot of iterations and generations and more development from everyone in the payment ecosystem to really make it that substitutable right where you can actually pay five rupees in digital form right yeah. if you think about the traditional digital form 
it has really been focused cards i mean cards has been in india for what 40 years uh, and it's really it's 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 a particular strata of society right and i always say this that you know the the the, the next 100 million digital payment uh, users in india will look very different to the first 100 million yeah, yeah. right mm. uh, and and that is really an important dimension to take on board so so when you get to a billion right per day as ram says or everyone hopes uh, clearly it's got the growth's going to come from people who will behave very differently to our traditional set yeah yeah right the ones who are using it today i agree i agree yeah yeah Yeah. yeah, no, it's um, it, it, it's it, I think it's exciting times, it's exciting times, and I'm I'm really happy to um, you know, have been introduced uh, uh, via VJ here to uh, to you, Kaucik. I think it's uh, it's an exciting time. There, there was one thing you mentioned at our first call. I really have to ask you about, uh, and that is, um, you say that you have a permanent ticket for Arsenal games and that you like the Swedish soccer player Freddy Jungberg and I I didn't I didn't challenge you when did you discover Freddy Jungberg and what what's so great about him really now you you know put it on tape what's Yeah yeah <laughs> funny good you broke the payments in from it's 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 uh, yeah outside of my family I think unrequited love for us and I have no idea how it all started but it did and I support so I have to tell you growing up in India a lot of us grew up on Uh, one television station right yeah. uh, we didn't have cable until much later and uh, uh, i think when we used to get soccer games uh, you know in the in the sort of mid 90s when cable suddenly started uh, thankfully you're not born in england so you don't have prejudice on where you are born who do you have to support you pick your team and as a neutral you start picking the team that plays most attractively yeah right? yeah and those were sort of early asen wenger days uh, burke camp etc and they started to play really attractive uh, football so i sort of started following arsenal the onri years invincible years lumber yeah. was uh, a part of that uh, <laughs> and growing up in india i'd never seen somebody with a red mohawk anyway uh, he he carried that for a few years right so so yeah so that's kind of uh, how it all started right i mean but, uh, i think we had a few funny that you liked uh, because, because i remember actually there was a there was a national game between sweden and england and freddy jungberg in that game he was absolutely the best player on the whole pitch and and he was uh, he was bought almost um, i think it was within weeks uh, he had been sort of bought over to arsenal uh, so I, i saw that game uh, i remember how he that was his sort of uh, really breakthrough on an international level that game he was just uh, I, i don't know he played unbelievable so 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 then um, but, but it is kind of fun that you you sort of you told me that uh, particularly fred jungberg is the guy that you 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 yeah and he was very very different to the other flair players right i mean he was quick and he 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 wasn't like pires who used to play on the other wing right yeah 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 he yeah. was more technical was fred yeah. was all heart and uh, glory yeah. and speed and what Well, also, also, what I thought was great uh, was um, you have a son, which is sort of uh, phenomenal. I, I've seen what he can do with the soccer ball, and, and I, I've seen seen his practice now during the COVID days. Um, you know, uh, what, what, what's um, how is it being a dad uh, watching uh, your son uh, being having you know su- such great talents? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, look, I think. Uh... he had a head start because we used to live in london as you know before we moved back to india okay. about yeah 6 7 years ago so so he started kicking the soccer ball at maybe 3 and a half 4 right i think that helps uh, and then uh, i'm quite a fanatical football fan uh, as you know so uh, hanging around with me i think he got into football early so so he plays i mean i look i think he's 11 uh, so i i always keep encouraging him to to sort of uh, play because he enjoys the game Uh, you know, uh, it's kind of. What, what team does he play in now? Where, where, where do you live, Kauji? Are, are you in Are you in Mumbai or Bangalore or where? Where do you? No, live? I'm in Mumbai. I'm in Mumbai. Uh, so, yeah. so, so, so I have to say this. It's quite interesting that uh, there's a huge amount of focus on investment in 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 uh, you know sort of grassroots and and youth football in India. India hosted the Under 17 World Cup uh, for men four years ago, and and that was really the catalyst. So. I'm actually quite pleased. So he trains at a at a sort of uh, a professional club that that plays uh, 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 the youth league in India. So it's a very structured India league. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, U30, U15, U17, uh, I think U20 as well. And that then dovetails into the senior team. So, yeah. So, he trains five days a week. Uh, wow. He's now being coached by a former uh, 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 international, Indian international who has an AFC pro license coach. So, as parents, all you do is want to give them maximum exposure, then see whether they have the uh, dedication and the devotion and the commitment to make something of it. Yeah, so we'll see. But yeah, I keep telling him that I'd rather you be a football player than a than a payments professional. <laughs> That's my joke with you. Were you also a soccer player yourself, uh, Kaucik, when you were young? Well, not really. So I played, I was a much better cricketer than, than footballer. But the funny thing is, I grew up in eastern India in, in a place called Calcutta. Yeah. And that's kind of, uh, I don't know if you know this, the world's more oldest or most followed derby is actually two local clubs in Calcutta called East Bengal and Mohan Bagan. Okay. When, when I was growing up, these two clubs would play in Calcutta and I've been for a few of those in my sort of early teens. Yeah. They used to have more than 100,000 people in the stadium. Wow. Is that about. like the El Clasico in Spain, you know, uh, Barcelona, Real Madrid in soccer? Yeah, yeah, it is like that. And it's also, there is a geographical split. Like if you come from one part of Bengal, you support this team. So it's kind of quite intense, right? So I used to play football. I mean, it's kind of very normal for me to play football every day with my friends. I wasn't very good at it. When I left Calcutta, I figured I was quite good. So clearly, it's a, it's a bit like... It's a bit like my son's a very talented 11-year-old in Mumbai. I'm not sure how he will feel if I if I if I put him in Europe, right? So that's, that's perhaps you should, you should transfer back to Calcutta so he, he gets some really tough competition. Sort of. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, this is something that we always debate, right? I mean, honestly, like if if I keep telling him, one of the reasons I haven't retired yet is. If he's half good, then maybe I need to earn some money and give him a chance to go to Europe uh, and train okay. in a more sort of environment yeah. which will challenge himself. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So yeah, yeah payments, Arsenal, uh, weekend, full-time dad, uh, chasing, walking around soccer pitches around Mumbai is yeah. sort of how life is at the moment. Have you ever been to Sweden, uh, Kaucik? Have you, have you come to uh, up here in the north? Uh, or you well, just... I went to Stockholm for a day okay. on work. Yeah. Uh, in 2004. Okay. Uh, but that was like, you know, one of those work trips where uh, you just straight out of the airport, yeah, yeah, fly yeah. into office and back. So yeah, it was yeah. it was always, Scandinavia has always been on my, I have not actually been to any of the Scandinavian countries. And, okay. Yeah, well, and well, to, well, to, well, you know, we, we are here in the south. We're in Malmö, which is just on the other side yeah. of the bridge from Copenhagen. So if yeah. you were to visit us, you would actually fly to Copenhagen, uh, yeah, the Danish capital. Yeah, yeah. so it's on my list. My bucket list is to at some point go and see the Northern Lights. So that would then yeah. Yeah. combine a trip. You have to go much further north than... Uh, I than know, I know. But that, that's my excuse to, you know, when the world becomes normal again, as they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that, I think you should, you, you know, I, I, this this year, I, well, last year, I should say, now it's 2021, but I... This was my first two trips to India. Uh, I did one in Feb and one February and one in March. I, I almost were uh, sort of locked into India because I, I just left before the whole quarantine happened. But, uh, you know, even if I've lived in Asia for five years, in both Singapore and, and in Kuala Lumpur, but I never made it to India. So uh, this was, uh, it was a great encounter for me to come to your country. So that, so that with that, I think you should, you have to come and visit here. Uh, you're more than yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah, no, no, I will, I will. Uh, in fact, uh... Uh, yeah, it's on my list of places to go to, right? I mean, yeah. in fact, while the few years that I was in London, every next trip was always, we were planning to go to sort of Scandinavian countries. Yeah. And somehow it... it you, hey, hey do, do you know, I, 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 I speak on a weekly basis with um, our first partner in digital cash, which is Viki, Singaporean com uh, company. And I, I told the guy there that he, he should sell it into his management that the next sort of you know, joint company meeting we should have at the ICE Hotel. And the ICE Hotel is in uh, Yukasjärvi, uh, sort of Kiruna, uh, <laughs> far north of the polar circle. And it's a, it's a hotel made just on ice. They build it up every year because it does melt. Uh, it, it doesn't stay, uh, you know, with minus degrees for the whole year. So they build it up in ice. Uh, I've, I've stayed there uh, once with my family, but it's, uh, that's just an amazing experience. And you can have the Northern Lights as well. Yeah, yeah, it's funny you say this because I lived in East Coast, uh, United States, and now I live in Mumbai, where every day is between 28 degrees Celsius and 32, and it's humid. 
yeah so yeah. you know when i first left india i and went to europe i was like why on earth does everyone look at the weather <laughs> we've grown up in india where the weather doesn't change right i i live in a city where i can't survive for 30 minutes without an air conditioner yeah yeah 12 months of the year so i think i'll freeze my body sort of gotten used to uh, yeah extreme heat but yeah. no no i certainly look forward to uh, you, you know, know let's see what we can do i, I think it would be fun um i i think um ice hotel uh, the northern lights just 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 coming here maybe here coming yeah, yeah. And, and and i think look coming back to sort of more serious stuff uh, i think there is tremendous opportunity i think uh, you know we are all trying to solve for the same problem from from exactly. different aspects right and ultimately i i really see the ability to seamlessly process transactions in an offline mode as quite critical to the whole payments transformation like if you have to get to a billion transactions per day yeah, yeah. there needs to be technology that is able to do that yeah no, I and i i don't think the, right now on having everything online is it's not actually it's a dead end uh, you will not But be able to do it all the way it's just not it's not sustainable right i think just, yeah. that's really yeah, no, i agree i think it uh, needs to go that way no i think that's a perfect um, point to end this uh, wonderful uh, interview uh, kaucik uh, thanks a lot for um you know uh, volunteering to be on, on this call uh, i i would love to continue the discussion to see if we can set up a partnership with aci worldwide that would be uh, an honor for us and um you know uh, if you ever would make it to sweden on the lights uh, you know you know dro- drop us a call we'll uh, yeah, no, yeah, fix a meeting with freddy lumberg for me to come in do that i'll jump on the yeah, next I'll, i don't know i don't know freddy actually uh, myself but i i i'm sure i have friends who knows freddy so i'll, I'll make an introduction otherwise with uh, you know pwg uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or and gerson I, i i'll i definitely we can go and see him i know where he lives <laughs> yeah 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 so no my sons is uh, like big fan right so i yeah, got yeah. to know all these uh, best freestylers in the world yeah you know yeah pwg you can't, yeah. is uh, yes uh, you know he's, he's an amazing freestyler yeah yeah he's a phenomenon yeah anyway you can thank you so much i appreciate it we we should continue to talk and explore opportunities together and 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 you know for me uh, this is a really important time in in the payments transformation journey for for this part of the world you are the right place at the right time with the right sort of technology solutions that you're offering so i wish you all success yeah yeah no and thank you so much for your kind words and we we love to work with you so let's see what we thank can you. do thank you thank you very much yeah. okay